Check one, check two. Check one, check two. Looks like we're good. Okay, we get started. Um, if you got any questions, just drop them in the chat. It's, uh, <laughs> It's 12.59, though, so. Yeah, so we're going to start talking. I was, <laughs> so far, Ali, all that <laughs> haven't heard me before. I'm actually a real professor in in real life, so I was actually teaching a Java class yesterday. The interesting thing was we started talking about um Afghanistan and what cyber security what cyber security issues would you have when you're talking about Afghanistan, right? But people don't realize when you in a foreign country, infrastructure, um, you're gonna have a ton of technology and a ton of cyber security problems, right? So the title at the top is Afghanistan, Taliban, cybersecurity, privacy issues, and death. All right. So we're going to go. I just did a couple slides just to talk to them, though. But if you see that device at the top, it's actually doing a biometric scan of somebody. All right. There is a ton of biometric data in Afghanistan and Kabul. All right, so, we, so we're going to get through that and kind of walk through the different technologies, the different issues, especially when you uh, retreat, undeploy, like kind of seeing a little bit out. What's up, Kenny Kanjo? Big shout out, bro. I'm busy with the client by identify. We'll get this look up. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for coming through, Kenny Kanjo. Check me out on the replay. I always appreciate you coming through. Everybody go check out his channel, Deep Brother. He be giving out some, some great information, too. Um, so if you look at the first side, we just talked about Afghanistan, cyber, and technology. So one of the different type things in there is Afghanistan Taliban. They've been on social media for 20, 10 years. Why? They've been grooming people, right? They work on their meshes. I think people in the United States, and I'm, I'm bad about this. We think the world centers around the United States. There's a whole big other part of the globe, continents. Kenny Kajo travels, you know, worldwide traveler type. So he understands that there's a ton more than just the U.S., but we just focus on the U.S. So the Taliban, if you go out there, they got Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, Instagram accounts, WhatsApp, and Telegram, right? The last two are supposed to be encrypted messaging services, right? So you can plan, not get eavesdropped, right? So Taliban has been putting their message out on these platforms for years and decades. They used to get banned a lot on Facebook. Somebody, some people think they actually got a, a media consulting firm to how to uh, smooth out their message, right? So they don't get banned from these uh, social media accounts. So if you talk about Facebook, well, I guess they're in Facebook groups. They're on a ton of Twitter, a ton of Instagram talking about the United States, the infidels, uh, holy war, how are we wrong, how are we right. All right, so people don't understand how, because uh, the Taliban is what, they're kind of a political party, a faction. So a part of that is, we re they're going to recruit people to join them. They're going to recruit people to go against the United States. All that's on social media, controlling that. So part of cybersecurity, part of that is what? On social media is controlling the message. Make sure you're not getting phishing. So, so you set up accounts, so you can actually fish people. So they, they've been out there setting up accounts for five or six years. They have followers. Some of your followers follow them, right? So now they have this whole um, identity to attack the you know the United States and our our allies with, right? Because this person's uh, some of it's real and some of it's fake. 
All right, so they use those different identities to uh, groom people, uh, get people set up, uh, get people to join them. Right, so that's part of cybersecurity is can you track them on the web? Can you figure out who's fake accounts? All right, can you fill out who's legitimate but actually just trying to groom people you know in your organization? Right, because they're trying to get deeply embedded in uh united states organizations and with united states people so i think a lot of people miss that so one of the other thing is what was if you looked on the news when you saw the united states actually leaving retreating or whatever you're calling it they left a ton of united states equipment you talking about trucks tanks i mean it was armor car ammunition all right so if <laughs> so if you didn't, if you plan your retreat better, why would you leave all that equipment for the Afghans to take over at the end? So a lot of times is when you talk about leaving a server, uh, a cloud service, the first thing you talk about is removal or destruction of documents. A lot of um, government entities tell you what kind of shredder do you use? Quarter cut, cross cup shredding. How do you uh, take hard drives out and you got to drill a hole in them? All of that's part of cybersecurity, right? So what documents did you shred? What documents did you get rid of? What documents did you pulp, right? Meaning a lot of people think you could take those strips and put them together. I know I saw that on a mission impossible, but I, I don't know if they have it that, that deeply yet, but... China show people putting shreds back together that they got from government ent entities and government locations. So we know China take each individual paper and try to paste it back together. Right. So what is your removal of and destruction of documentation? And the other part of that is, of course, there's a ton of computers over there. Networks, hard drives, mini computers, servers. Right, so how did you remove and destroy your computers? Right, did you leave them up? Did you check them off? How did you handle that inventory as you were leaving? Uh, I'm not saying cabal to be exact, but they actually have network in uh DMZ zones because all that's technology, all that's computers, right? But they do usually have a plan if they get overtaken. How do you erase these hard drives? How do you destroy that? But there was a ton of equipment left in the Kabul in embassy, right? So did we think of how we're going to leave and, and do the proper removal and destruction of computer? And also that is telecommunications. We running wire. We running uh, wireless towers. We running a ton of phones, a uh, ton of mobile phones. There's a ton of infrastructure that was built over there over the 20 years to make it easy for us to communicate and have a, you know, us getting even on the Internet. Right. So a lot of people were doing news over the Internet and the wireless um, uh, telecommunication, telecommunication equipment they have set up. Right. Because over there you get a ton of news through, once again, social media like we talked about. Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Telegram. How do you how do you make sure that that telecommunication infrastructure is destroyed? Because you don't really want to leave any of that over there when you when you leave. That is true. That is true, Netropolis. That is true. I'm a huge. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy both both of those Riddick movies. But yeah, so how do you? But, you know, from a cybersecurity perspective, once again, they're on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. Uh, they figured out how to skirt it so they don't get banned. So they're actually um, grooming people, getting people on their side of faith. Uh, a lot of times they believe the United States is uh, moving um, not quite right or ill, to be exact. So how do you handle that in the cybersecurity realm? So it, it seemed like when you looked at the pictures, <laughs> we didn't get our retreat uh, coming out of <laughs> Afghanistan and Kabul directly when you got people trying to hang on an airplane, 
right? So, so obviously we didn't from uh, like I said, then over there you seen people driving government trucks and stuff. So it seems like we didn't plan that escape. Well, and I always remember part of cybersecurity is physical security. How do we uh, physically control stuff? Uh, how do we secure it? So a lot of people forget very messy pull out net travel. It's very messy. So like I said, did we destroy the proper documentation? Did we destroy the proper computer? Did we destroy the top proper telecommunication infrastructure being VoIP over IP, networking? Um, I'm sure they had a ton of mobile communications. And so if, if we left messy, did we get all that stuff um, not handled correctly? And this is the big one a lot of people don't realize as the Afghanistan cyber technologies. The United States were trying to get digital IDs so people can vote, right? So part of that is biometric databases, voting cards, facial recognition, uh, fingerprints, iris scans, and high for handheld in interagency identity digital equipment. So if I got your voting ID, I have your picture, right? So I can use this. That's actually my uh, thumbnail. That is that picture. So if I got your voting ID and I know you were helping the United States now with this uh, tool right there, I can identify you perfectly, right? Because I have your voter ID. I probably have your fingerprints, right? So now we leaving people in jeopardy because we're leaving. So if we didn't delete those, those uh, biometric databases, no voter registration card, the uh, Taliban is going to go look for people. They got this technology. They can identify you 100%. Right? So I think that's some of the parts we were looking What's up, Helmut? Just talking a little bit uh, about Afghanistan and cybersecurity. So that's kind of high. Basically, supportable uh, facial recognition. Uh, we left a few of these over there, which is not cool. So now let's get back to that slide. Like we talk about, you're already on Facebook, you're already on Snapchat. So we got your pictures from there. Now we got your voter voter ID cards we gave you, facial recognition cards, right? And your fingerprints and your iris scan. And now we got the handheld equipment. Taliban will use all this data to track down people. And we know they're not scared to execute people. So some of those people, if they don't get you, they're going to get your family. So if we didn't do a good job, um, Deleting these databases, um, tightening that data up and securing that data, there's going to be a whole lot of people going to be scrambling. So I think that's why you saw a lot of people trying to hang on that. Uh, I don't know what type of plane that was. That plane was huge. and Just trying to get out the country because they know um, their names and stuff are in databases, right, for working with us. Mm -hmm. right, so then with the handheld ID, they can definitely positively identify you. And two is, as part of that, if whatever we left over there, whatever we did control, that's my boss, he's from NSA, the stuff we lost control of when he talks about data. Let's see. What's up, everybody? The exit, I think, wasn't properly or thoroughly regarding this tech. 100% tell me. Uh, personally, I would have destroyed the database and our physical locations altogether. I'm hoping they did, uh, Helmet, but just the way the the pictures look and the exit look, and we, you know, when they showed the uh, the armed forces leaving, it just doesn't look like it was super coordinated. But you know, that's just me on peripheral looking at. It. So we have adversaries. So the data that's left over, if it's good, you can sell that to Russia and China. So if you got some data over there that you didn't delete, that's got spies, contact, base locations, right? You can sell that data. We were over there for two decades in Afghanistan, so we got a ton of data and a footprint. I read somewhere, and I'm gonna put the link in the description if you want to dig dig into it. Somebody thought it was seven thousand pieces of computer equipment over there, just with the bases and the uh, embassies and. Just saw the movement we had. I mean, we had a, that was a big base for 20 years. So we, we had a ton of electronics over there. So some, somebody's team said it was 2007, 8,000 of, um, different type of computer equipment over there, which was, I thought was, um, 
kind of mind boggling. So we're going to kind of go back and just kind of retrace it. So they were, um, the Taliban, of course, has Facebook groups that they get people in. They're trying to get people, you know, to actually turn or just kind of switch over to their, I won't say faith, but to, to their, how they do business for Taliban, to uh, have inside information, right? And Twitter, you know, Instagram, they on all the, uh, Snapchat, they on all the popular groups. The weird thing is, how come they're not getting kicked off, right? All those have those, you know, rights you signed up for and the, the usual requirements. So they're so smart that they're skirting those requirements and actually not getting kicked off those those platforms. So for me, I, I, that's a big hole in those platforms. That's a big hole in our government concentrating on those groups, just not the Taliban, but all sorts of groups. To do a better handle on um, uh, hate speech, foreign uh, takeover, foreign grooming, right? But there's always, you know, free speech in there. Let's see, I would have destroyed the database or wait till the evacuation and hit the areas with the drone. I thought about that drone strike helmet. I, I'm hoping we're going to go back out there and tell everybody, get out the area. We about the drone strike it. They do have our of the backers in this quick Taliban tank true. Same way U.S. Uh, helped get rid of Russia, they got help from others. That's true. That is true. And two is, I feel like sometimes we might be leaving them over there to, to get in tr trouble. Helmet. We always have people on the ground from nations to help us. But I believe those people believe they're going to get to the United States with their families and stuff. So I think that's one reason that they they kind of help us. Like I said, the, the interesting thing is the Taliban on all the social media. Um, talking about their cause, having people in the other part of the hemisphere, because the United States is not liked around the globe. We have enemies, so, as you know, so I believe they be trying to, our enemy is their friend, right? So I think they're trying to groom people, get people, you know, in force and from the United States. So it would be interesting to how that's going to turn, because obviously the Taliban took it over in a day or two. So what is that going to do? And like I said, from a cybersecurity perspective, um, how do we control all that data we left over? Once again, did we destroy the uh, proper documents? Did we uh, pulp it? Did we shred it? Did we did we burn it? Because even though we understand we're computer savvy, I work in the government. There's a ton of paper still in the government. Right. What about the Jews space lasers? Now, that is true. That is true. Um, for <laughs> they believe that faction is friends for the United States. But no, that's true. And for them, that's going to that area of the globe is going to start getting ratcheted up for them because, you know, the Taliban is obviously going to get them. So that's going to going to ramp it up. So. They even had a media director. I heard that too, um, J.M. Ramo. I heard they had a that or a PR firm actually helping them get that right. Get your social media correct. I'm actually going to interview a a, a, a media uh, director. Um, his job is to do Facebook ads and get you to vote a certain way. So there's a lot of data in Facebook that kind of knows who you are and what you are. So that's interesting. You <laughs> you said that, J.M. So I'm actually going to hire that in there. So once again, removing and destruction of documents. How do you handle all that? How do you know what's our priority? How do you know what documents have to be uh, removed and destroyed? Once again, computer equipment. I heard it was seven or 8,000 uh, electronic devices over there. Um, like I said, I work for the government. So after we use a uh, server, we actually have to have the uh, vendor drill a hole in it. And they give us an attestation saying they actually uh, destroyed that computer hard drive so it wouldn't have to be read. So if you work at DOD, IRS, and I think OSHA, they have some um, destruction of computers when you're done with, when you decommission them. What, what, is, what do you have to do to actually get them signed on it? And once again, they had a ton of telecommunication infrastructure. I see there's phones, there's network, there's wireless. Right, so you don't want your adversaries taking over all that basically free equipment and free infrastructure we gave them. But the way we pulled out, 
And I've seen guys on phones, it's like, well, I don't think they destroyed the network. All right, so what are we leaving over there? China would be able to span the Belt and Road Initiative in China all about commerce, 100%. Plus, there was no mature social media when the call, right, 20 years ago, or when the U.S. went in. That's true, 20 years ago, but now, and two is China span the 200-year game. So they're going to go in, um, offer them some stuff, offer them some infrastructure, and they're going to get some land to, for, for them to be able to operate. Right, so that's so that's going to be interesting too to see how that's going to actually uh, work, you know. Once again, the big thing I guess to hit me is they have database over there with digital IDs. We were trying to get people to vote, uh, biometric databases, voting uh, cards and voter IDs that were electronic. Part of that was facial recognition, fingerprints. And once again, the handheld interagency identity detection equipment, the high, right? So uh, the Taliban actually, definitely, I thought they showed the Taliban actually have that device right there so they can identify you 100%, right? So that's the scary part. We left technology is portable. They can run up, scan your iris, scan your face. Hopefully, if we, didn't, if we left those databases, now what's the next? opportunity that and you know if you see privacy issue and death the privacy is the least of your worries right they know who you are they know who they family your family are right the other part of that is death right if you work with the united states to work in a certain capacity we didn't agree with and we can identify you 100 percent you know what that means right that's going to mean uh public execution because they want to make sure it's known that if you deal with a certain thing or make a certain move, there's definitely going to be consequences to you, to you, to you doing that, right? So, so when you see stuff like that, right? There's always a technology compute technology component, and with that, we know there's going to be a cybersecurity component. So do you think Chinese will put boots on the ground in Afghanistan? No, they're not going to put uh, army boots on the ground. They're going to put uh, technology and infrastructure boots on the ground. They're going to build them stuff and they're going to trade it. Because if you go to Africa, they built them a high speed railway, right? Because they were getting access to gold, diamonds, and certain minerals you need for technology, right? So I don't, I don't think it's going to be um, military boots on the ground. Uh, China just doesn't move that way. And I think they know that would be a deal breaker for the United States. If they put physical Chinese, but I think we would go back. I think that would be a breaking point for us. So now China, from historically, they just don't move like that. Hell, man, Hawaii is, is outfitting. Oh, yeah, Russia fights. Oh, without a, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Hawaii, Hawaii I'm hoping I said that, is the, for me the top. Networking company in the 5G realm. Cisco's trying to catch up. We're we're trying to catch up. We're trying to block a Huawei so they don't get um, all the day all, all that um, business, right? So I think we're blocking, but I think their technology is farther along than the United States technology. I think the tech expansion and military were from Russia and China there. Spot on Afghanistan. Yeah. So I think, yeah, with uh, natural and mineral resources, I think that's what China wants. And they, I, and what China has that that the United States struggles with is they have technology and they re, they, they're willing to broker with it to get minerals. When we go in, because we're not a nation state, so when you have a private company going, they're going to go in asking for money and, you know, Bitcoin. When the nation states come in, right, they're moving as a nation, right? So they're going to ask for natural minerals and resources for their whole country. What's up, Ty? Just talking about a high level about Afghanistan, Taliban, cybersecurity. So, hell, man, so um, that, that's my thing is uh, China's playing a 200-year game and we keep playing a four-year game. What's the four-year game? Every re-election, we kind of, okay, we in Afghanistan, we out of Afghanistan, <laughs> we over here, we over there. It's hard. The United States doesn't seem to have a cohesive 
global expansion for foreign countries, right? But really, that's what a nation state is. So when you democracy with private businesses, you know, it's, it's going to move different. So the big point here is, and we'll touch on that again, when when you have those databases with digital IDs, biometrics, now I can track you. Once again, is they're going to have access to drones with cameras. Be that the drones we left or the Chinese going to give them some drones. Mark my words, the Taliban will come up with drones. So they're going to be able to spot you from the air. They're going to have drones with facial recognition. Either they're going to track you down or their drones are going to be like ours. You can be able to execute somebody or kill somebody with a drone strike. The Taliban will have that technology. Right. The Chinese will give it to them or some other Russia would give it to them. Why? They're going to give them minerals and space to operate in that country because there's warlords on the Taliban. So and those companies don't care. They believe it's turn off. If I give you a drone, they don't think they're responsible for what the Taliban does with that drone at the bottom. Taliban will use all this data to track people. So. So when you track people, you know the end. Where are all the NATO countries talking about the <laughs> talking about the U.S. for pulling out? When you see other countries that barely had any boost, oh, a hundred percent, Jayan Ramo. We are the police uh, force uh, for the United States, and that's what we get paid to do, right? When we get access to countries for our private industries and how we move, it's because we are the uh, police force for the world. Right, so we spend trillions of dollars, right, on missiles, uh, bullets, tanks, right. But but the but the part of that too is we discover a lot of technology and a lot of cyber stuff when we do it. So don't don't be surprised behind the scenes as boots are on the ground. Our cyber guys are working, right? Our cyber guys are going into companies over there and networks we control. If we forgot something, they're over there deleting stuff. They're over there letting viruses go. They're over there. So don't think that our cyber guys are not working just as hard as the boots on the ground, right? Shout out to the boots on the ground because they're licensed to but our nerves are working. We're, we're, we're attacking people with viruses, I promise you. We're erasing networks. We're destroying hard drives. We're destroying telecommunications equipment from over here. Why? They're just spiking them. They can make that, uh, the Vostis sag. And that'll just destroy many transformers, many monitors. So our cyber guys are working. But make no mistake about it. So those digital IDs and database and voting cards, our guys over there, if we left them, they're over there trying to log into it and erase it, right? So they're over there working too. All oh, facts, helmet. The uh, boots on the ground in a minute is going to be obsolete, right? But I did a video, though, because I think some of their nerds are getting better than our nerds. So if you actually attack our electric grid or attack our financial system, so if China did that or Russia did that or took our financial system down for 30 days, the United States would put boots on the ground. All right. They go, we, you, you, <laughs> you delete our hard drive, we're going to come punch you in the face. Right. <laughs> so there, so I did a video on that is what's, so, uh, Helmut, I'm asking you that question. What is the line that is drawn for a company to do to us where we would put boots on the ground? So if you took a nuclear power plant and you made it overheat and react, we would definitely put boots on the ground for that helmet. So where's the line you think is drawn? If somebody broke into our uh, nuclear power plant and made it explode and blow up and we got nuclear fallout, we would definitely put boots on the ground for that. So there's definitely a, there's definitely something that would make you put our boots on the ground. So what would that be for helmet for you to send our army over there? JM, I've been seeing the Space Force. Guys putting some boots on the ground, too, moving around. I forgot about the Space Force. Uh, what's up, Boyles Info? Everybody go check him out. I'll be supporting him on um, LinkedIn. He'll be putting in great work on LinkedIn. I'll be supporting. Um, that is true. Um, JM, I just put our Space Force actually in with the cyber guys. Um, but that is a good issue. I need to look into that now. I'm, 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 I'm 
I lo I lump them in with the cyber guys, right? Because in there you talking about um, drone strikes, because that stuff is at the outer tip of space. Um, minerals, uh, technology, but that, I, I might have to dig into that, James. That's a good question. Um, shout out to the Space Force. I think we actually need the Space Force. A lot of people are, are not happy, but I think when we talk about going to space, defending space, a lot of new technologies come from thinking something of that, that big. The microwave was created because we were going to the moon in the 60s, right? And they had to figure out how to cook food in space, right? GPS, a lot of that stuff came from space technology. Mainframe computers, Space. You needed to be able to calculate all that stuff. Now, all that stuff is in the power of your phone in your hand from the '60s, but you you had to start somewhere to to to, to think think big, and that's kind of kind of what I want to do with this channel. Sometime is cybersecurity, of course, is VMs, uh, machines, people, but sometimes. You just need to think big. What can you do with it? Elon Musk made a ro Elon Musk made the robot, right? Everybody signed the robot, right? So is that our robot? Is the robot gonna get taken over by a virus and attack us? Can we make the robot think like a person? I study artificial intelligence when I was an undergrad. That was in the nineties before you had real <laughs> computer power though. <laughs> so you couldn't get to where you at. So when Elon Musk thinks of a robot, right? This, of course, technology, but from a cybersecurity perspective, can we hack the robot? Can we take over the robot? Can we make Russia's robots shoot them and not us? Right? Anything you create in that thought pattern, cybersecurity is in there, right? From hacking, controlling, um, taking over, right? Because if you build something like that, of course, somebody's gonna try to hack it, right? We we know that. Do JM? Do you Space Force will eventually replace NASA? Um, maybe. Um, uh, the reason why I think it would replace NASA is I want I'm gonna reword that. I think all that's gonna fold in to the Space Force. I don't think NASA is gonna go away. I think they might end up folding that into NASA because. It seems like we let uh, NASA um, hanging, right? Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson, they go into space, they seem like more than NASA now, right? Both of them went, we're going to be paying $200,000 a ticket so we can be weightless for 30 seconds. Uh, I don't have that type of money, but that's billionaire money. But I hope in probably in the next uh, 20 years, a ticket will probably be ten grand, right? I am 53 years old. My first cell phone was in a bag the size of my laptop. I shit you not. And they had a big rubber antenna. Now they're so, they were so small, you could put them in there. Now they're getting big because, but your phone is now the, your, your mini computer. I teach Java and I teach a lot of people don't know. I'm actually a real professor at a local university. I have my class, they do all their assignments on their, on their cell phones. Now their cell phones are kind of, Biggest shit look like a piece of toast, but most of them they use it like it's a mini computer. I'm like, dude, are you doing your assignment on your cell phone? He goes, yes, professor. I go, how about it? I'm too old. I can't see that little ass print. But so if you think in the next ten or fifteen years, where is technology going to be? Right. The 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 part that makes me a little nervous is technology is spreading inequality. To that at alarming rate, so I need to think we need to get a hold of that because there's a lot of people living in tents in California, and we're looking at Ransom, uh, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. They playing around in space, man. That's like a quarter of a million dollar ticket, right? Now, I think it was a million dollars, it's supposed to go down, right? So, I think we need to figure out how that's happening. So, let's see, Helmet, uh, Game and Solution, shout out. The Space Force is needed. The race to mining the moon. Facts. Text can come from that. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. Help. One of the other things is, is asteroids loop through the whole galaxy um, like 100 years. Then it comes back around. Imagine if you got on that asteroid, mined it, then, then took all that new mineral and brought it back to the United States. Like you said, uh, moon mining. But on top of that, those asteroids, because they're on these 
uh, orbits that are like hundreds of billions of miles and they come through space and comets that come around. What if you got up there and mined it, right? But I always remember cybersecurity. We're going to get that little germ that's going to come in and take everybody out on, on the whole planet, right? It's going to create a monster, right? When you keep going up and mining those mining those moon fragments. But so when you take cybersecurity, I put that in with technology, you start adding that to chemistry, right? Because the brain is actually electronics chemicals and matter right all working together right it's, it's just not your electronics in your brain it's 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 water it's electronics it's chemistry it's a neural network right your neural network's firing and off so it's just not electronics so all that together makes up your brain which we only use a fraction of it right so when you start thinking Later on in life, when you start living for 200 years, what are you going to unlock in your brain? Right? When you start living longer. Because I'm amazed because I see people in middle school at uh, these academies and these private schools. You got people in the eighth grade now doing calculus. Stuff I was doing as a <laughs> freshman in college. You got kids doing that now, right? Because the technology is better. Kids are, are thinking differently. Right. So each 20 years, what you did, it, it slides down like four or five years. Right. So you see kids doing financial calculations on on financial calculators. So what are what are those kids going to start thinking of from an IT perspective? I mean, that's true. Some people talk. Yeah. Mining asteroids, I think, are is hot because, once again, that's flying through. The atmosphere and the pressure on those rocks and minerals, right? And diamonds and a lot of stuff is actually created off of pressure and heat. So if you fly through the galaxy, what 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 type of stuff is gonna be in those meteors, meteorites, right? JM, do you think it's good that we are building roads and hospitals and infrastructure in other countries when we have several? That's a tough question. Um, I believe we should definitely take home first, but I, I do have a global perspective. Um, you would think we could do both. Um, uh, especially with those several tent cities in the United States. So um, off the top of my head, JM, I would say no. I think we should get our own uh, country in order. We got a lot of veterans and just people in general just living on the street, um, especially if you go to Cali and anywhere. You know, I'm in the Midwest and I see people, you know, begging and in the streets. So, um, but a lot of times, you know, when, when you deal with capitalism, there's always going to be a top and a bottom, right? And there's always going to be creative destruction in capitalism, right? We let the farmers, you know, disappear. We let the coal miners disappear. So each 10 years, there's a part of the segment that I call it the pyramids, Maslow pyramid. The top, I believe, is intelligence and insight. So if you're not climbing to the top of Maslow pyramid, you're going to get wiped out. My um, thought pattern is if you got artificial intelligence, machine learning and robotics, the bottom 20 percent in the next 10 years is going to get wiped out. Why? If you got self-driving trucks, self-driving cars, most of your charge on an Uber is the person's insurance. So if you can take an Uber for a dollar fifty anywhere close to your house, are you gonna even buy a car in the next future? Right? If you do Kiva robots, they actually are at Amazon warehouses. It looks like a rumble robot with shelves. It brings those um materials to the packer so i don't need pickers they put all that they pack those robots at night then they pack them not every same thing is on a robot they pack them by what you order so if you order a beer they put the peanuts next to the beer because amazon knows that if you order beer there's 90 percent chance you're going to order a, a peanuts with it right so they pack them like that so when a robot comes it's usually if you order eight things, it's smart enough to know six things are going to be on there, right? Because they track what people order. 
And they smart enough to know if a hurricane's coming to your town, they know to put the plywood up front. Pop tops never go pop tarts never go bad, even when your refrigerator goes bad. So they start grouping stuff together that when you first look at it, you're like, why are they put pop tarts next to plywood? Right? Because they expect your power to go out. They know kids eat pop tarts and they know you need plywood. So that's part of the um, one of my I talked Java last night. One of my um, students was talking about visual, visualization, right? As part of of IT and putting data together, right? That's visualizations of what data can you put together that you don't think to go together. Like plywood and peanuts, plywood and, and pop tarts because of tornadoes, right? Those are things you need, right? So they start putting them together. Oh, facts on that, uh, Netropolis. UBI, I think they were testing that out. Um, they going to need to do UBI so people... Um, don't ride and kind of have a base living. So when you have um, Jeff Bezos damn near worth a trillion dollars, how much can you tax him to get universal basic income? Right. The only problem with uh, universal basic income is you can't have 25% of the population paying for 75% of the people's basic income. Right. So we got to figure that out. But no, you correct on that UBI. Hawaii's been out for years. The Chinese uh, don't mind learning. All oh, plus due to a homogenous society, no infighting. All oh, facts. That's one hundred percent. The other big thing that they do with that is is they uh, authoritarian dictatorship. They got a two hundred year plan. Google it. So they they have this. And two is which I don't like is when you go into Chinese to do business. If you're Cisco, if you're Oracle. They give you a two-year run, but you got to turn over your intellectual property to them so they can study it, right? We don't do that. So to do business in there, you got to give over your intellectual property. You get a 10-year run, but they're, like you said, that's how they learn. That's how they come up to speed. That's how they got as good as us, right? We probably should have been turning down that deal, but it's hard to turn down because Chinese has a huge population and they're slowly getting a middle class to move in you know, make moves with them. So from the Chinese perspective, we showing them how to do business. I think, oh boy, I don't think we got a 10 year plan. I said we had a four year plan. Every time somebody get reelected, we, we switch plans. But so I think that's where the Chinese has the United States beat, right? And the other weird thing people don't realize is we train their top engineers. Their top engineers goes to Berkeley, USC, MIT, uh, 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 Ohio State, some of the biggest engineering uh, universities. And that's something um, we have to do. We need to go um, go from search to get you in, but we need to start going for super advanced degrees. All right, I've been talking about working on my PhD for a decade. Hell, I could I could have done it, but for me, sometimes it's like, I don't think I will make more money if, if I got a doctorate. But what you can learn as a doctor and what companies you could try to start, even while you're in doctoral school, because Google, Google was a PhD project, right? And those big universities are so cool with it. Now, your PhD, when you were at MIT, Berkeley, they expect your PhD project to turn into the company and the school's going to fund you so you can... So they can get on an IPO when they're when they're new. So when you go to Berkeley, MIT, they're gonna the school's gonna fund you to get you started. Then once you get to a certain level, they call it an A series. They're gonna hook you up with the venture capitalists, right? Because now that's why if you look at their endowment, it's billions of dollars, not hundreds of millions of dollars. They almost billion dollar endowments in those schools. Why? Because Larry Breen and all those guys that start Google, Facebook. And all those companies that are seen, they donate a ton of money back, right? So I always said, I always said, tell the HBCUs and the other colleges they need to start doing those incubator programs, right? Because one of my goals is to actually start um, teaching small kids how to program. And as part of that is hooking them together and start them a small incubator, right? Now it's going to be incubator. I don't think it's going to make a ton of money, but it's what does incubator do? An incubator gets people 
together, small different businesses working together and talking to each other and doing stuff differently to do a business. So once you get young kids doing that and thinking like that, they think differently. Right. My generation was you got to get a good job. We're going to pat you on the head. Right. We didn't build corporations. Now, I try to start two <laughs> IT corporations and I wasted about a hundred. Not wasted. I invested about a hundred thousand dollars of my time and about forty thousand dollars of my own capital. Right. So we have to create companies and infrastructure right, to hire people to control the industries we want to control and to put back into the uh, economy. Quadratic payments via Bitcoin could fund UPI. Uh, that's a good point, Metropolis. I, I, I'm going to have to think about that. I think that's true. And I, they're going to have to figure out a way to uh, fund UPI because it's already here. People don't realize, I believe, all the money you're getting in the pandemic is getting you ready for UBI. Those are UBI payments, right? Because they're got people on employment for a little longer, giving people extra food stamps, just trying to figure out how that's going to work and play out in a um, capitalist economy. Hell, my ha-ha, I remember a professor who put 100 k in Google years ago. Facts, he's worth a billion dollars, man. Billion dollars. And so those are an investment. And the crazy thing, if, just think if you'd have put 10000 in there, right? You see people in Silicon Valley talking to a couple people. They'll cut them a check for $50,000 on the spot. They have you sign a napkin, man. <laughs> it's cut $50,000. Because they're used to, angel investors are used to hearing those pitches like on Shark Tank. Figuring out if you got a vision and then just investing in it. Because they figure out if they invest in 20 things, they only need two things to hit and you're a billionaire. So if you invested in a couple things and five of them was horrible and two of them was good, if you get a Google and something, something, I'm trying to think of something smaller than Google. It doesn't have to be that big. And a lot of people don't uh, realize this is a lot of millionaires in, I've actually been in Silicon Valley, is you never heard of them because they had a project or a product that was small and decent. Oracle bought it, Microsoft bought it, and just integrated it into their product. So they could have made two or three hundred million dollars. You never heard of them. twenty million dollars thrown around Silicon Valley. Nothing. You got a widget, and they needed to do some in uh, Microsoft Teams, do some in Oracle Cloud, some special security module that you've been working on. Like, oh, we need that. You want to give you? We give you fifty million and give you a uh, hundred thousand options in Oracle, you know, stock or in or in uh, Microsoft stock. Because I'm a big Oracle guy. I've done Oracle for 20 years. They bought, I think, 300 companies in the last 10 years. Just small companies that they just bought. They used to have four web servers. They just bought them out and made them into one Oracle web server. They bought WebLogic and a couple other big ones and just mailed them all together. Why? When you're a big company, you got a huge sales force. If you're a small company, you don't have a big sales force. So you sell to the big company and a big company think, their, their sales team is going to um, ramp their product up and make it work, right? Yep, yeah. yeah. yeah, worth $6 billion. Yeah, A lot of people are wealthy from buy. Yep, yeah. of all races, facts, facts. Unless you're in the space, they walk. Y'all, oh, you never know. Like I said, I was in Silicon Valley. It just You could just feel the money out there. Like I said, I talked to, I was working for this venture capitalist, long story short, doing a, they were trying to do a, <laughs> a hospital project <laughs> With no HIPAA data, so I was doing policies, procedures. I was um, scanning their infrastructure because you got to do a write-up uh, system security plan for a large government company. It's going to be about twelve hundred pages. So I helped them with all their documentation. Um, so a long story short, when you out there, you see money, you smell money. You're like man, this stuff is moving differently. So I'm in this other one program, a true story. The uh, venture capitalist let us. I mean, this was oh god, probably fifteen years ago. He had a brand new electric BMW. I want to say it's 2010, eight. So I get in the car. It's a little wheel. It looks like an iPad, one of the original wheels that you turn with your thumb to start this car. This car is $250,000. I jumped in the passenger side. I was like, I am not wrecking this car, man. But once again, it's just the money out there. It's just, just Like I said, most of that money is from companies you never even heard of. 
Oh, uh, Ty, 100%. I said our um, financial, the next attack is going to be on our financial system. If you Google that, uh, Russians and China's been in our uh, financial system for the last couple of years, uh, probing, scoping, doing reconnaissance. I said in a video in the next year, uh, the financial system will go down. So I tell you, young guys, have a couple of dollars in your pocket because you would not be able to use your credit card. You would not be able to use Bitcoin. The whole uh, electronic system is going to be down. So when you go in, they're going to tell you uh, you need to spend cash. So, hey, M, do you think there would be a demand for IT contracts in Afghanistan during the evacuation mission? Do you think the military would be so? Um, I think they planned it out, Jam. So I don't think they're going to need any IT contractors. I think the IT contractors they had was already on staff. And to be honest, I think those guys been out of there for about a month. So I don't I don't think they're going to need any um, IT contractors um, over there. I think what's going to happen is though, I think it's going to become destable and they're going to find another region like Cabal or somewhere else where we're going to need to set up base. And once we need to go back over there, I think that's when you're going to need your contractors. Ty thinks the contract is going to be needed. I think they were already there, and uh, I think they figured it out. Because even though we pulled out kind of messy, I, I think that was some, a lot of it was planned. It just didn't go smooth. So I think they already had those contractors on, on lock. Uh, venture capitalists want them financials for sure. Oh, 100%. Uh, niche uh, quadratic payments or primer for. I'm going to have to get on them quadratic uh, payments, uh, Netropolis. My uh, Bitcoin game is a little weak, Netropolis. I'm my old man. I'm still handle, I'm still walking around with hundreds in cash in my wallet, Netropolis. I'm my old. I'm going to have to work on my uh, my Bitcoin game or that whole uh, blockchain. Because I know it's Ethereum. I know it's a ton of other coins. Cybersecurity is going to be more demand in my opinion. Oh, 100% helmet. The reason why cybersecurity, if you Google they said it's a half a million cyber jobs up. The reason is in demand is because the internet wasn't made for security. It was made for availability. It was made for when the army got attacked. It could automatically use that for DARPA, which is a military contract, to actually use that for communication. The internet was never meant to be secure to take payments, right? So that's what now, as we always, we try to boat on security after uh, what, 50, 60 years of the internet already being out there, right? And two is, when we, built the, when we built these systems, we thought thinking about security as an after fact. So now there's ransomware hack every week on a product, right? So that tells you we need more cybersecurity people. Then when the, where I work at, cybersecurity at a federal level, they have federal requirements. We're not even talking about that. We're just talking about basic, I hate this word, hygiene of, of cybersecurity, just basic stuff. Passwords, MFA, um, zero trust networks, uh, multiple di multiple divided by networks, um, just general stuff like that. Uh, passwordless projects, right, versus the MFA, right? How often do you change your password? On-prem versus the cloud. There's so many basic things we we, we don't even have down yet. Could, uh, let's see. Yeah, but are we ready for a war with Russia? Uh, no, nah, Ty, we're not ready with war, but um, I think it's like two bullies standing off at each other. We're going to let the uh, tech guys battle it out first before we put boots on the ground. So before you get to that kind of go war or war with weapons, we're going to have it out in cyberspace first. So. Uh, could it be a showdown close to it in over the South China Sea? Um, I think so. But once again, uh, I think it's going to be technology. Uh, I call it the nerves. The smart people are going to do it first before it gets boots on the ground, right? So um, I don't know if we would go to war over, over South China Sea, to be, to be honest. I think uh, current administration is talking about pulling back and just us being internal and worrying about self, right? So I don't, I don't think we're, the current administration I feel is not about foreign occupation and foreign wars, right? I think it's a continuation of the last uh, regime. I, I just think we're going to get out of that, that that foreign wars. I heard Coinbase was breached via Dr. Boyce. I'm going to have to check on that. I think I actually read that. I <laughs> Crypto gets... Um, 
breach so much. I don't even like doing those videos very much anymore, uh, boys. It's just it's so common now. It's not like it's a shop. Uh, Security Plus is golden right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Security Plus is definitely a nice introduction. It's gonna get you in the door. Um, the only reason I I, um, I pause a little bit is um, like somebody put that on on my channel is. Um, some of the gatekeepers still want degrees with Security Plus. I'm gonna have somebody on Thursday. He actually just got the big boy, the CISP. Um, the young guy I work with, he just passed the CISP. His phone is ringing off the hoods. So he's getting a ton of people on him on um, LinkedIn. So he's gonna be on. I think we're gonna go Thursday, probably a, uh, around one or twelve. So he actually just got the Security Plus. Oh, fact, zero day, a hundred percent. There's, not, there's always going to be a zero day, and they pay you well for zero day. The cool thing, though, if you talk about um, FireEye, IBM, and uh, Microsoft, they actually have behavioral-based um, virus detection. So if it looks like a virus, even if it's a zero day, they actually quarantine it. So we're getting a little better with zero days. What's going on, Dave Dub? Checking in. So a little glad you came. We just kind of talked a little bit about Afghanistan. Um uh, databases, they got biometric database, voting cards. They were actually on Facebook, um, grooming people, not getting kicked off. So from a cyber security perspective, what did that look like? North attack, Mexico, North Korea attacking us most. Oh, as far, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We the big kahuna, right? North Korea, you know, really, if we put boots on the ground, it's China, maybe North Korea, Russia. There's not many people that can can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the United States when we talk about weaponry, right? So the easy way is to attack is what? Cyber. We suck, right? And the sad part is we trade most of those people to attack us, right? So that's the crazy thing. So no, so yeah, you're going to see a ton of that um, from people coming up. And a lot of times you think it's North Korea. Russia's in North Korea servers attacking us. China's in North Korea spinning up whole being farms in North Korea to attack us. So just coming, just because it's coming from North Korea sometime, don't be fooled, right? <laughs> That's the bait and switch. How long will it take me to get the big boy cert? Uh, it just depends on your background and really how well do you take tests? Because a lot of it's memorization, and I'm going to shout this out, and I told him. It's actually a management test. That's the sad part about CISP. Once you finish with CISP, you can't configure a router. You can't configure a VM. You can't do a VPC in uh, uh, AWS, right? You can't do an Office 365 setup, uh, uh, tack into your uh, local uh, Active Directory so you can have single sign-on. It's a management test. But recruiters love it. Businesses love it. And they put you in a middle management position with it. It's the test. But for me, it's like they talk about fencing, slippery paint. CCTV, if the sun's shining too, it's a management test, right? So, but I'm going to have my young guy on there. We're cool. Uh, we're going to do it uh, Thursday. We're going to talk about the CISP. I'm going to schedule it for 12 and 1. You should see it. But yeah, so, um, but yeah, especially that, that one's super hot. Especially if you uh, pair that with um, a clearance, top secret, or even a low level clearance, um, he's super hot. Everyone uses a proxy, in my opinion. The user attacker gets my facts. Facts on that helmet. You always use something different. Yeah, you're always using it. You're always using uh, Mr. Rex. And when you use Tor browser, right, it's going through servers in Antarctica and Alaska. So the who's ever tracing you in the Tor, they're going to come up with a browser on the other side of the planet. All right. So now that's, that's actually what it's, it's meant to do. Let's see. The one trace I did to Russia, single jakes trace back to corrupt Russia, use corrupt. So, oh, without a doubt. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I was talking to an FBI agent. We were talking about cybersecurity. He says most of his um, things with ransomware, he goes into the middle of a small farm in a rural area. Right. I do a lot of work in the Midwest, Indiana, Chicago, and Ohio. He says he's in small farms. Why? All those farms have been taken over by Russian bots and attacked. So when those companies get attacked by those bot farms and bots, they're actually small farmers who have no security on their PC. They have a small network to run their farm of about five small servers. He said 
80% of those servers were hacked. In the, uh, both of those three states were uh, foreign nationals using those servers as botnets to attack corporations. Right. So when they go tell them that uh, your farm is attacking this co company, they're confused. They don't know what they're talking about. Right. Because they have no security. They're not patching. They're not doing patch Tuesday on a Windows network for a small farmer. But once again, he has five small servers. Right. And you could probably spin up a couple petabytes if you're doing a denial of service attack. And they won't even notice because when you take them over at night while they're sleeping. Right. To attack. You were attacking there in France. I was actually on a site at a customer and they were being attacked around the world. And a lot of them, once again, were small farmers and they were getting hit by like a million servers in the state because the nation state took all these servers over because they had no security. So that's about it for me, fellas. I got a meeting coming up, so I'm going to end it. Um, once again, I'm hoping to come back Thursday. We're going to talk to my uh, CISP young guy. So we're going to talk about, you know, how his um, skills level went up, uh, his money probabilities went up, kind of what's his plan for the future. Who cool. obviously here is claiming that Linux kernel is not good enough for nearly 100 new fixes. Oh, I agree with that. Uh, I, but the crazy part is I think Linux is much better than Windows. So as part of that, I, I, I agree with him. I think Linux is better, but I think it's much better than Windows. Facts, facts. So I'm, I'm out of here, guys. I'm glad y'all for coming and check me out. Once again, you'll see me on Thursday. We'll be talking to the CSP. I'll catch the replay. Um, if you got any questions, too, you can always uh, Professor Black Ops at Gmail if you want me to hit some a specific question for him. Facts, facts. Get in them search. I got to get back in mind. I'm lazy. I'm out of here, guys. Let me get to this meeting before I get fired. <laughs> Have a great day, man. I appreciate it, Elmer. Talk to y'all later.